Hello my boys, welcome to the Shrapnel Ballista build guide. Again, this is not your typical Shrapnel Ballista build. My variation comes with 100% spell suppression, which is big, and also comes with nice dodge chance. We can reach up to 70% dodge chance, as you can see here in the... Look at my defenses. So with the flask cap, we always have above 70% dodge and 100% spell suppression. The typical Shrapnel Ballista build does not have these defenses. We are not sacrificing damage. We can still insta face Lysia. We can still do uber bosses. We can still do guardian maps, you know, with eyes closed. Because of these extra defenses, you don't have any problems inside these maps. Boys, let's take a closer look at this build. So we are a strength stacker, meaning the more strength we have, the more totems we have, the more damage we do, the more defenses we have. So basically we are focusing on getting a nice number of strength. Here, with this particular build, if you have more than 2000 strength, you're more than good. You're more than good. You can do guardian maps, you can do sanctums, you can do a lot of things in this game if you have more than 2000 uh, strength. So you don't need to over exaggerate with your items, you know? You need, if you want to transition to Shrapnel Ballista, please know that this is not a leak starter. You cannot leak start with this build. You'll have to transition from something else later and you need to have a decent level. So when you will do the Shrapnel Ballista swap, you need to have at least level 95. Listen what I say. So at least level 95 in the Hierophant Ascendancy. Yeah, this is very important. Also, you need to know about the budget. Uh, 60 divines, 80 divines minimum. Especially if you are a new player. More advanced players can lower the price slightly. But new players must know that they need to have in their stashes around 60 divines, 80 divines to make this build working. Because if you don't have this money, you will end up with a build which is incomplete. And your damage will suffer, your defensive will suffer, and you'll have a really bad time in this game. Now that we got this out of the way, let's talk about the items. Let's go. Okay, my boys, we have five essential items. The bow, replica iron commander that you can get from Heist. The helmet, crown of ice. The body armor, which is the iron fortress. The boots, which are replica iron warped. You also get this base from Heist. And the gloves, Maligaro Virtuosity. We'll talk about everything. So these are essential. You should not start the build without them. So the core component of this build is this bow, replica iron commander. Read this line here, Shrapnel Ballista has one additional maximum number of small totems per 200 strength. Basically, the more strength you have, the more totems you can summon due to this bow here. So, at 2200 strength, I can summon this many totems. Very simple, very nice. If I had a lower number of strength, I would summon less totems than this. Yeah, it's important. It's a core component of this build. An essential piece is also the boots. Read the last line, adds 80 chaos damage to attacks per 80 strength. Basically, the more uh, strength we have, the more flat chaos damage to attacks we get. This is big. Most of our damage comes from the boots, not from the bow. We get huge damage boost from the boots, which is crazy to think about. The gloves are also essential. You have here your critical strike multiplier is 300. So basically now, because we're using Maligaro Virtuosity, we don't care anymore about critical strike multiplier in our skill tree. So here, we will take nodes just with critical strike chance, yeah? We don't want nodes with critical strike multiplier, like this, for example. These are useless, okay? So it's important to know. Here, the body armor, the helmet. These two have special interactions. Let me try to explain you. So here is our strength, yeah? So here, if you read this line here, strength, damage, bonus, instead grants 3% increased melee. So you will start asking me, boss, but we are not doing melee damage. Yeah, because we have here this keystone, iron wheel. So this uh, keystone will transform that melee damage into spell damage. And someone else will say, boss, we are not a spell caster, we are doing attack damage. And now the helmet comes into play, which converts this keystone. The spell damage gets converted into an attack damage, but at 150% of their value. This is insane. That's why it's mandatory for the cluster jewel to have one with uh, increased spell damage here. Because a lot of new players don't that skip my guides, they don't take a cluster jewel with increased spell damage and they take whatever they want, elemental damage or attack damage. No, it's mandatory to have with increased spell damage. This will give you a huge damage boost. I need you to stress a huge damage boost. So be very careful when you buy the cluster jewel. Okay, now we got this out of the way. For the rest of the gear, which includes the quiver, the amulet, the rings, and the belt, you can use rares if you want. These are not essential. Basically, for the amulets, we are strength stacker. We want to stack as much strength as possible. I recommend buying a perfect astramentis or close to perfect astramentis because it's good. It will help you with the attributes. You see? Uh, especially intelligence. Yeah, if you're using other amulets, for example, you there are multiple options that you can uh, use here. You can even use this, a Great Wolf Talisman with 32 increased attributes, yeah? But you will have problems with intelligence. 
That's why if you're just starting out for the first time, you should stick with Astra Mantis because it's powerful. So as it is, I'm doing Guardian Maps, I'm doing Sanctum, no problemo. Yeah? Later, when you get familiar with the build, you can try something else. Yeah. For the rings, you want uh, rings with strength. This is the idea. Again, this is not a cheap build. You see, I have one with increased strength. But in some scenarios, this ring with the implicit increased strength will be very expensive. Yeah. So if it will be very expensive, here is a budget alternative that you need to know. You will buy rings like this with flat strength. So we don't have increased strength, we have flat strength. And in this video, I will put towards the end a crafting guide. How to craft these rings and quivers and belts very cheap. You know, So you don't overpay on the trade website. Your boss will help you. Okay, so if you cannot afford with increased strength, no problem. You buy rings like this and uh, you will be sold. Again, the Calandra Stotch is not mandatory. You can use two rings normally. Yeah, I used it because I had it. Hmm? So it's good to know. For the belt again, you want a belt with synthetized implicit uh, increased strength. In this build guide, you'll have towards the end a crafting guide, how to get a belt very cheap, you know, because you need to be smart when you buy your items because you watch my guide here. Here you will have a belt with the strength explicit and the implicit for strength. Very easy. For the quiver again, we want a quiver with strength. Yeah, you can even, if you want more power, you can buy a quiver which has a good fracture. For example, bow attacks fine additional arrow. For the quiver base, look for quivers that give critical strike, attack speed, pierce, or accuracy. These are great options. For example, I got this one bow attacks fine additional arrow. I will craft it. In this video, towards the end, I will craft this quiver and I will do an upgrade here. You can also buy a quiver with synthetized implicit, but usually they tend to be more expensive. So you can buy a quiver which has increased strength implicit or flat strength implicit. You can also do that. It's up to you. There are multiple options here. Now let's talk about the flasks. In all my builds in Path of Exile, I like to have immunity to corrupted blood on my life flask. So we'll roll it with orb of alteration or you can buy it until you have here uh, some sort of instant recovery. So you want uh, the life to be applied instantly and you want immunity to corrupted blood. Next for the flask, you want a <coughs> diamond flask for critical strike, mandatory to always have a quick silver flask. This is great. I and mean, this is a great thing. Any defensive flask of your choice. You know, I prefer jade flask. There it is here, jade flask. And for the last one, you know, here you can use a sulfur flask if you, up to you. But it's mandatory to have a divine life flask with corrupted blood immunity, a, a diamond flask, and a quick silver flask here. Yeah, a defensive flask of your choice. And I don't know, for the last one, usually I like progenesis, but this league is progenesis is more expensive. You can upgrade later. If you put here progenesis with the enchant when you take a savage hit, man, this build will feel close to immortal. So we covered the items. Now let's move to the skill gems. Hello, my boys. Let's talk about the skill gems. So again, for the boots, you'll use Dash, Second Wind, Life Tap, and Blood Rage. Now for the gloves. Here you want Cast on Death and Portal. This is a quality of life setup that I use on most of my builds. Basically, when you die in your maps, because it will happen sometimes. Maybe you take 100% Delirious, maybe you juice your maps very hard, and you will die. This will open a portal automatically for you. And when you go back inside the portal, you will get um, teleported at the location where you died. You know, this is a quality of life. Here we have automation and steel skin. Because in Necropolis League, they change how steel skin works. We no longer can bind it to left click. So we need to put here automation and steel skin. So good, so nice. Here is for the auras. Here we have purity of elements aura and grace. Hmm? If you want more dodge chains, buy a grace level 21. If you want more uh, resistances, you put quality on your purity of elements. Yeah. We also have here precision level one and an enlightened support. This can be level two or level three, doesn't matter. We use the precision here in order to trigger uh, special watcher eye modifiers. So we have watcher eye modifiers for attack speed, for example. So you can get 50% attack speed while affected by precision. This is optional. Again, mandatory is to have grace and purity of elements. Later, if you want to go for a watcher's eyes that has extra benefits, you can put precision here and you'll need to put an enlightened level two or three uh, in order to uh, socket it. <sighs> okay. Now let's talk about the setup for the bow. We have frenzy, cast on critical strike, summon ice golem, calling strike, despair, which is our curse, and life tap because we are reserving 100% of our mana. Now we are reserving it. <laughs> How this works? Because a lot of new players don't know. 
So in your maps, you do shit ton of damage. So you can just place your totems like this. From time to time, you'll shoot with Frenzy to get those Frenzy stacks here. Yeah, which is very nice. Also, it will resummon the Ice Golem. So when you shoot with Frenzy, because we have cast on crit, it automatically resummon the Ice Golem pretty often. So totem, the Golem will be always up, which is always nice. When you reach the boss final arena, you will want to shoot with Frenzy three times, two, three times. This will curse the enemy with despair automatically for you. So you don't need to manually curse him and will resummon the golem, which is nice. Also, you can call the boss when it is low life with frenzy. So when the boss is low life, you will shoot some frenzy and he will be called, will instantly dead. Also, the, uh, here the golem can call the boss for you. So we have the ice golem. When the boss is close to dying, he will call the boss for you because it's linked to calling strike support. Very easy, very nice. Boys, now let's talk about the main setup. We have Shrapnel Ballista, Life Tap, Awaken Void Manipulation, Increased Critical Strike Support, Withering Touch Support, and Returning Projectiles. Now I need to tell you something. Here in the main setup, you always want to buy the highest level possible. Yeah. For example, if you buy a Shrapnel Ballista from Lily level 1, the totems will instantly die and deal zero damage. So make sure you buy at least 2020 from the World Trade website. Again, all these gems should be high level because it's your main attack your main source of damage yeah so even for the withering touch you buy something 2020 directly from the trade website returning projectile 2020 minimum yeah you got the idea you don't want to buy them from lily level one again you transition to shuttle ballista when you have the budget and the levels yeah very easy very nice now let's talk about the skill tree let's go okay boys let's take a look at the skill tree so here is the Shrapnel Ballista skill tree. Again, you will have the POB in the description of this video. But we need to talk about some essential things that we need to have. First of all is this jewel here, which is Thread of Hope. It must be in a large radius. This is excellent because we'll give you one additional projectile here, one additional projectile here. It is mandatory, listen very carefully what I say, to take this note here. Shrapnel Ballista does not have pierce effect like Siege Ballista does, for example. So we need to have uh, projectiles pierced to additional targets. Without this node here, your mapping experience will suck. Your skill speed will feel horrible. So this is mandatory, should be always taken. A lot of new players that make this build, they skip it for some reason and they start complaining that the clear speed is bad. <clears throat> the reason for that is they didn't watch my guide and they skipped this node here. Now you know, you want to take it. So here we have critical strike chance and this will help with the spell suppression. Speaking of spell suppression, you want to take this wheel which gives a lot of spell suppression. Here we have another node with spell suppression. This one is great, you get life flash charges when you suppress spell damage. So it will help you during hard encounters. It will fill up your life flask. Very nice, very sexy. Here you want to take a mastery point, 60% increase global critical strike chance. More critical strike chance is good, remember. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, let's see what else we have. Here you want this one. When you summon your totems, you will have a chance to summon two totems instead. And this is essential because you have so many totems, you want to be able to summon them fast <clears throat> because we have too many. So this node should never be skipped. Yeah. Another mandatory node is this one. You want maximum life because we don't have life modifiers on the body armor. Yeah. So you have 50% increased maximum life, which is nice. Now let's talk a little about the tattoos. So in Acropolis League, they brought back the tattoos and I, I'm having fun with this one. <clears throat> so you have 5% chance to blind enemies on hit, which applies also to your totems. Blinded enemies have much harder time in hitting you. So you have more, you are a more tanky boy. You can also apply tattoos here on the dexterity nose, which is with spell suppression. So if you, you're struggling to get your spell suppression to 100%, know that you can apply on these small ones. Spell suppression tattoos. Yeah, this will help to get capped. And you can see we have multiple green ones. We have a lot of them. Yeah, this is a nice trick. <coughs> Speaking of spell suppression, we are using Mage Bane. This will convert our dexterity that we have. You see more than 300 into spell suppression, which helps. <coughs> this is very helpful. So it, it will help you to get your spell suppression. Now let's talk about this beauty here, which is a large cluster jewel. This large cluster jewel is mandatory. It must have increased spell damage for the jewel type. Here you want to buy one with a lot of passives, ideally more than 10, 10 or 12 passive points, yeah? And you want here a cluster jewel which gives a lot of strength, <coughs> 6 or 8 strength, ideally with increased effect. Also, you will notice that we struggle to cap our resistances. Maybe you can find one which also has increased elemental resistances. Ignore this point here because it's useless. Usually you want a cluster jewel which has 
which doesn't have any special notables, yeah? Because we are st these small points are excellent, are on steroids. They give us strength, they give us spell damage, which I explained because we're using this helmet, they get pumped a lot, they give a lot of damage, man. Spell damage gives a lot of damage for this built archetype. Now you want a medium cluster jewel with sleepless sentries. This will grant you free onslaught. So when we summon our totems, we get onslaught buff permanently. And with our totem playstyle, we always spawn our totems. So onslaught will always be up. Yeah, my boys? Good idea. Also here I recommend getting Ancestral Reach. This is great, will uh, help you place your totems farther away, farther away from you. <coughs> here for we're using two split personalities. This will help you to cap your hit chance. So here we want to have our chance to hit capped. You see, I'm still working on it, but the idea is, look, if I remove this, these are very essential, man. So you need to take them. I will fix my hit chance, don't worry. You want to see here 100% or 99 or 100%. I'm almost there. So that's why it's mandatory to use the split personalities with strength and accuracy rating. Yeah, my boys? Yeah. Precision aura also helps here. If you put here an enlightened level 4, you can put um, um, more levels to precision. Yeah, and this, this also gives accuracy, will help you with the hit chance. So if you're struggling with this, you buy an enlightened support gem level 4 and you level up precision more. And this will help you to cap your accuracy. Very sexy, very nice. Now you want point blank here. So it gives 30% more damage to targets at close range. I mean, this is essential. For example, for a boss, you'll spawn all the totems near the boss and then you run. And they, the totems will get 30% more damage, which is huge. For the Timeless Jewel, we are using Lethal Pride. This will uh, give you strength nodes. For example, for the small ones, you can see it gets added more strength on top. Yeah. And you look for one which gives increased strength on the notables. For example, here, increased strength. There are multiple ones. Increased strength. You see? Here, flat strength. <coughs> this is not a guide on how to get uh, Timeless Jewels. I'm just telling you what to buy. So you'll buy a Lethal Pride. Uh, timeless jewel and make sure you have a good one which has strength on the nose that you take i've seen a lot of new part of excel players that for example the timeless jewel has strength on this node yeah and they spec these nodes no you want to buy one which has the strength nodes on the uh, nodes that you already have so on these nodes here it's very important so if you have uh, let's say here uh, uh, strength you won't spec like this you waste five points to get here no you skip it you focus on the three website until you find a good timeless jewel. Again, here we want to be increased attributes and we take here more strength. Pretty self-explanatory. Here for the watcher's eyes, look, I, it's important to get one with chance to evade attacks while affected by grace. This is very powerful effect in my opinion. Will give you more dodge chance. This is my favorite one. Also, if you have more money, you can buy one which gives uh, attack speed while affected by precision and also evasion while affected by grace. This two is the best combo that you can get for this build, for the Watch's Eyes. Here you have a jewel slot. You can put whatever you want, I don't care. Here I went with attack speed, uh, some maximum life, some strength, because we're strength stacking, some resistances. Again, here you take whatever you want, I don't care. You put whatever you want. Yeah, so you take whatever you want here, or you can go like I did here. You buy a simple one with strength, some life, some resistances, and more good stuff. Uh, let me see for uh, <coughs> essential things here. No, I covered everything. Yeah, remember you have the POB in the description of this video and you will copy. But now you understand what to take. Here are the common mistakes for this build. People are not taking Iron Wheel, which will lower drastically the damage. We'll do close to zero damage if you don't have Iron Wheel here. They're taking the wrong cluster jewel tape. They're not taking with the spell damage. Yeah, they're not using split personalities with accuracy. They just buy it with strength and some other crap modifiers. So you want strength and accuracy. Boys, and that's all about the skill tree here. Now let's talk about the Ascendancy. For Ascendancy, we're going for Herovan. So this one gives you one extra totem. Totem placement speed, so you will place your totems very fast and increase totem duration, so they will last. Then you want to take this one, which gives 5% more damage per summon totem. This is huge, huge. It's more damage, which is a multiplier effect. Also, you have 1% life regenerated for each totem that you have. <coughs> So let's put it like this. We have 90 totems. <coughs> so 90 totems multiplied by 5. So you close to 100% more damage. This is insane because of this build archetype. You get a lot of free damage. So the Hero Fund Ascendancy is busted for this. Also, you have life regeneration for totems you have. 
You see, you get a lot of life regeneration. You, you can reach up to 2000 life or more. Depends on your setup that you took. Now you want to take this one, which permanently gives you four endurance charges, four power charges, which is nice. They also give some resistance and some physical damage mitigation. Speaking of physical damage mitigation, when you summon your totems, you have close to 80. And you get eight more from the Pantheon here. Yeah. And for the last one, you take this one because are useless. Everything is useless. You will take this one. will give you slight damage boost because we have transfiguration of the mind. You know, a slight damage boost. So if you can take it, why not? We will take it. Like this. Now let's talk about the bandits. You will kill all because we need the skill points. Now let's talk about the Pantheon. For the Pantheon, you will take Soul of Lunaris. Make sure to unlock it. So you want to unlock the Pantheon fully to get all the benefits. And you want here Solo Shakari. This will help you with the Chao damage mitigation. Which, by the way, don't worry. So we'll take this one which you will have. Um, you can play this build on minus Chao's resistance. Trust me, I played this build for more than three years. You're fine. First of all, you have a lot of life regeneration per second, so you barely feel the poison damage. And you have high block chance and uh, dodge chance, so you will avoid those uh, pesky uh, physical damage as Chaos modifiers. You, I'm doing content like Simulacrum way 30 on this build. You have on my channel various videos with minus Chaos resistance. But if you really want to have here more Chaos resistance, know that there is a Watcher's Eye with modifiers Chao's resistance while affected by purity of elements. From 30 to 50, you can buy that one. You can also roll your rings and belt with Chao's resistance for the belt and the rings because it's pretty common. And you fix your problem. Eh? Very easy, very nice. You don't need to overthink. Also, there's a flask that gives you Chao's resistance. But I'm telling you, you don't need to do all that. Trust POE guy and play like this. You will be fine. Uh, we talked about everything. Yeah. Yeah, we talk Pantheon, we talk Ascendancy, we talk Bandits. Boys, this is the crafting guide. Crafting the items for the Shatter Barista build can be very easy. You don't need to overpay. A lot of new players don't know how to craft their items and they overpay on the trade website. But in this beautiful video, I'll show you how to do it. <coughs> We're gonna craft a quiver, a belt, and a ring. Yeah? So um, let's get into it. Let me take some uh, catalysts, which these are the most important intrinsic catalysts. <coughs> this will give you more attributes. So here I will start. After you buy your base, so for the rings you want flat strength or increased strength synthesize implicit or maybe you buy a fracture. Any of those are good. First you will apply four intrinsic catalysts before we start. Then you will apply an alchemy orb so it becomes a rare. Then you want to reroll with deafening essence of rage. This will guarantee that we get a tier one strength modifier. You see? And you click it until you get something useful. Okay, so you basically you spam like this and you look for the modifiers. Here we're interested in getting resistances because we need resistances and life. These are the most important things that you can get. For example, resistance here. And you keep continuing spamming it until you're happy with the outcome. It's very easy to craft and it's also very cheap. Accuracy is also good. Look, for example, this one. It looks decent. And you check here if you can craft something, and we can craft. We, then we will go here. You can make one much better than this. This is just an example how to get your rings, you know? Nothing fancy. Here you can craft something. We are doing chaos damages. This one. And we made the ring. You see, you don't need to overpay. You keep re-rolling until you get more resistances or whatever you need. This is a great ring for uh, to get you going with uh, this build. Now, I'm gonna craft a build. Same process. This is, I got it from the tray website. Make sure it has the tier 1 um, synthesize implicit. So it needs to roll 13 to 15. What I will go do here, you need to bless orb it to perfect. So I want to see 15. Like this. Then I will apply intrinsic catalyst. Now it's 18. Now will I make it a rare? I will start re-rolling with the deafening essence of rage. And this is exactly the same process like we did for the ring. You do it until you get something useful. Like resistances, life, and other good stuff, you know? You, have, you need to have patience and you will keep spamming like this until you're happy with what you get. 
very easy look here i have double resistance sometimes you will give a higher modifier higher tier we can craft life if you want you can also use an exalted orb slam uh, and then you craft something at the bench again this uh, this is just an example of what you can do but you will get much better than this if you have patience to roll it that's how you craft your build now i'm gonna do an upgrade for my quiver so i want to change this quiver here into something better so i will do it now live here we're interested in critical strike chance attack speed life or resistances look at this beauty we have uh, tier one life tier two cold resistance perfect roll this is a nice now let's see what we can do here we have three suffixes uh, yeah, in this scenario, I will extra slam here, see what we get. And better than nothing, yeah? And now we're gonna craft here something. Okay, so we can craft something. Let's see what we can craft. You can craft this one, armor elevation, if you have it unlocked. Or you can put chaos damage to the attacks, this one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put this one with a good roll. Okay, so I'm gonna put it here as an upgrade. Now you see how to craft it. This quiver here, I also craft it using the same method here. I hope this was useful to you. Now you know how to craft them. You don't need to overpay on the trade website. If you cannot afford an implicit with 7% increased strength, do not worry. You buy a ring like this with flat strength. You see, like these ones. Yeah, and use this method which I presented here. I hope this helps. Boys, let's take a closer look at the upgrade. So you did a build, you like it. You want to improve it you want to make it better okay so let's start with the essential the first thing the biggest upgrade that you can do is for the body armor look for one which has plus one level of socketed gems or plus two level of projectile gems with a good strength roll so make sure the strength roll on the body armor it's good because this can roll from 60 to 120 ideally you want more than 100 with the corruption this gem shrapnel ballista at level 22 it gives you one extra totem that's why when you have a 21 20 gem when you put it with this corruption now it's level 22 this means we get for free one additional totem which is big because as i explained one additional totem it's huge mostly because we give five more more damage per summon totem we get one percent more life regen per uh, totem we have here more armor because of that totem we get more movement speed because of the totem and more so it's essential you will get with this corruption plus one level of socketed gems which also bumps up the support gems that's why it's better you can also buy the second corruption which is plus two of projectile gems because shuttle ballista is a projectile gem has the projectile tag and will get to level 23 or 22 and you get one extra totem another upgrade that you can do it's for here you can buy a crown of ice with plus two level of our gems aura gems so they bump your auras also, you can get that with a 90% multiplier cost, you know, when you drop Enlighten. Or you keep Enlighten and you use a precision higher levels, you know, like level 16, 70, until you reserve your mana fully here. What upgrades you can do here for the Maligaro Virtuosity? You can buy with Corruptions. You can buy with uh, Attack Speed Corruption, make sure it's a good roll. Or you can buy that Corruption, Attack Save Critical Strike Chance Corruption. These two Corruptions are great. Maybe you can buy both of them, because you can only can have double Corruptions, which is nice yeah here for the anoint you can anoint an amulet it depends on your needs if you struggle with resistances you can buy this anoint 10% uh, elemental resistances and strength and dexterity you can find it here at the top so it is one else you can go for more damage which the best one is corruption let me see where it is this one yeah so your wither had more effect so you deal more damage depends what you need i like to have my resistances overkept as you can see more than uh, depends because the some map modifiers and alters will shred your resistances so you better to have a surplus of resistances yeah another thing that you can do you watch for items with good rolls for example here i have perfect attack speed 20 percent you will bless off the implicit yeah so here uh, uh, it's still league start of necropolis league i need i forgot to do it but you want to bless off the implicit close to perfect yeah? so you put like this until you have 49 or 50. So make sure you do that. I won't do this in this video because I don't want to stay all day. <laughs> For here, you can buy a quiver with synthetize implicit, 5% strength. If you don't have already, buy a ring with synthetize implicit, percent strength, which is important. 
Yeah, so corruption strength annoys this. Here for the flask, you can buy a progenesis, which is so great. You put progenesis here and you put bench enchant when you take a savage hit. This will help you, especially with Uber bosses. Speaking of Uber mode bosses, in Path of Exile, all bosses have a specific element. For example, if you do the Shaper or Elder, they do a lot of cold damage. So what I like to do here, then I put, I put somewhere. Let me check. No, I, this I will keep it. You put a um, Sapphire Flask with an enchant when you take a Savage Shield. So it triggers when you most need it. This is the idea. And you can do the bosses. You need to be familiar with the mechanics. Maybe you want to do Uber Mode Cortex. Put this Topaz Flask because there's a lot of lighting damage there and it will help you. Everything becomes easy mode once you get your Mage Blood. So this build can work on a Mage Blood, which is pretty nice. After this video, I will transition to the Mage Blood, which is not mandatory. But Mage Blood is not affordable by a lot of people. So you put the Mage Blood here, yeah, and you get your Mage Blood Flask and your Gucci Bellucci. Yeah, because you will have uptime on these special flasks when you do Uber bosses. But you don't need Mage Blood. As a matter of fact, your strength will lower if you use Mage Blood. This one is much better. But I need to cover this also in the video. For the skill tree here, you will buy a timeless jewel with better uh, nodes as an upgrade. You can buy a cluster jewel with better nodes as an upgrade. And here, uh, when you reach level 100, you can do this here, this beauty here. So you will inspect, you see what you can inspect here, because maybe you have a mage blood and you can drop uh, some suppression chance nodes and you have more ones. You'll go like this path. You click here, 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 and here. You take this jewel here which also gives free, uh, 30 extra strength. And in this jewel socket, you will use this one. Emperor's Mastery. Okay, you will use this one. Uh, in increases attributes by 7%. This also helps with Mage Bane to cap your suppression, gives more maximum life, more global defenses. This is nice. So this will be the last point when you reach level 100. You'll put a mastery, Emperor's Mastery here. And you're done. I hope this uh, helps you. Know that you can also change your Astramentis. I explained that this. You can put a Great Wolf Talisman. You can even get one with quantity of items funds. Why not? You want to get one with perfect attributes, 32. It's perfect. Then you want to get with critical strike chance to attacks, increase chaos damage. These are the best for the second modifier on the Great Wolf Talisman. Okay, my boss. Hope this helps.